All right. Hello, everyone. I'm um, sorry about that. It looks like we were having some technical difficulties. So we're going to take it from the beginning again. Um, There's only five minutes in. Sorry about that. But um, just to restart again, um, welcome to Hackathons 101. So today's workshop is going to be talking about what to expect, um, what's going to be happening next weekend at Command F. I'm sure a lot of you all watching today are excited for what's going to be taking place. Um, if you have any questions at any point about today's workshop, please head over to our Discord, and one of our TAs will get you sorted ASAP. Um, today's workshop is going to be suited for both you know, beginning beginner, newbies, as well as veteran hackers. You know, today's content is going to be useful you know, no matter what skill set you feel like you fall under. With that being said, let's just dive in. So a quick introduction. So I'm Kevin. I'm an APX coordinator in my second year at UBC Computer Science. Hi, everyone. I'm Victoria. Um, I'm the first year rep for NW+. I'm on the Command of team this semester, and I'm in my first year of science at UBC, and I'll be hosting the How to Not Hack um, at a Hackathon portion of this workshop, as well as the design intermission later on. Awesome. So a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm going to start off with talking about team formation, um, how to get to know your teammates, uh, how to find teammates if you're still a solo hacker, how to brainstorm ideas, how to come up with the right project idea for your skill set, how to not hack at a hackathon. And then we're going to have a bit of the design intermission, getting used to Figma if you never used Figma before, how to get unstuck, as that's quite inevitable with any programming project in general, how to demo your hack once everything's programmed and submitted, and possibly wins and prizes in the process. To wrap up this workshop, we're going to have a bit of a Q&A at the very end to answer any more questions you may have that weren't answered in this workshop. So making the most out of your time. So 24 hours at, you know, at first may seem like a lot of time, but once you get started and start dealing with things like bugs or attending workshops and dis having discussions, those 24 hours are really going to pass by really, really quickly. So what's going to be really important is making the most out of your time. The working style that you go into this, into this hackathon is really going to depend a lot on the goals that you're trying to achieve. If you're coming here for the purpose of really just grinding it out and making a stellar project for your resume, or perhaps you're coming here for more purpose of just kicking back and taking a break. Either case is, uh, is totally fine. You know, do keep in mind that if you're on a new team, working on a new project, this can equal lots of potential friction. Something you may consider is the diagram that I have on screen. So this is the forming, storming, norming, and performing model of group development. And the basic concept of this diagram is that every single team, in order to come together, uh, reach their goals, and deliver results, has to go through every single one of these stages, and that every single stage is inevitable. Now, for some of you, you know, working together, collaborating, may come really naturally. And if that's the case, that's awesome. But for some of you, you may be a little bit perhaps more shy or introverted, and that's totally fine as well. For you all, you know, it may be a little bit more of a process, you know, getting to know their teammates and working with them. It certainly seems like so based on this diagram I have on screen. These stages may be something you want to consider and think about as you go from complete strangers to people that you, you can be comfortably rely on, rely on and make an awesome project together. So what's going to be really important is building trust and building it fast. So at the very beginning, you know, share your skill levels and talk about your intentions. If there's you know, certain weaknesses or certain skills that you want to build on throughout this hackathon, make sure teammates know. As well as your intentions. You know, if you're coming here for the purpose of just taking a break from the hustle and bustle of the school, make sure your teammates know that so that eight hours into a hackathon, they aren't surprised when you've gotten absolutely nothing done. Kind of focus on where you can make the most impact with your skill sets. If there's a certain area of the project that you know you can just take to the next level with what you know, make sure teammates know so that together you guys can make the most awesome most awesome project possible together. Be sure to support one another. Your teammates are going to be your most valuable resource. Please don't be scared to you know, go to one another for help, advice, things like that. If you are still looking for a team, please check out the team formation channel on Discord. We do have two systems for how team formation is going to work. We have the standard, um, you know, create an introduction and reach out to people that you're interested in working with. We also have a bit of a queue system. You can queue up and get matched with random people who are also looking for teammates. So how do I come up with a good idea for my hack? So what you may want to think about is the business aspect of your project. So perhaps ask, what's the minimum viable product or the MVP? So for those who don't know what that is, the MVP is basically the simplest prototype you can create to solve the problem or issue at hand. You may ask, how should we break down the work? 
what should I try to accomplish? What should this person try to accomplish? What should that teammate try to accomplish throughout this hack? And for all that we can accomplish at this hackathon, what are some possible stretch goals for the future? Perhaps we want to take this initial whiteboard idea to something much more than that. Perhaps a product that we want to sell somewhere. Maybe as a result, we want to think about more of the you know, business model, the product ideas, how are we going to design everything and sell it, right? If that's the end goal of your project. And of course, you may want to think about the tech stack or the, and the languages that you want to code in. Perhaps pick one that you're familiar with or another new one at a workshop with a mentor or even on your own time, perhaps you this week or even today. Maybe get a little bit more familiar with a language that you haven't really used in a while so that you can use it next weekend at Command F. Now, all these points will prove useful when you're designing a demo presentation at the very end. Now, these points may be th something that you might think about and go over, and it may be points that judges themselves will be thinking about as they look at your project. Now, if you're still not sure exactly what you want to do with your project, um, something I would rec recommend doing is perhaps start with thinking about a topic you're interested you're interested in. Sorry, so perhaps you know choose a cool topic. It could be you know. It doesn't really have to be necessarily related to computer science or programming, honestly. It could be just something that you're interested in, perhaps a hobby or just a field of interest outside of computer science. Perhaps it's COVID, mental health, robotics. It could be stuffed animals if you're really interested in that even, honestly. It could be even perhaps metal craft or anything that may be interesting you currently. From there, perhaps think about and brainstorm you know, problems or issues currently involving that topic. Perhaps for COVID, I'm really annoyed by the fact that people aren't taking it seriously enough. Or for mental health, maybe I want to make it or create more resources that to help support students during this time when there's a lot, you know, isolation and distancing and things like that. Now, from there, once you've started brainstorming and came up with the ideas that you want to address, start developing possible solutions that you can create and you know address these problems through your hack. For example, maybe with mental health, I want to make an app. And inside this app, the user can not only um, create, you know, not only have journal entries and talk about their mood, things like that, but also it could be integrated with their, with their therapy system or their therapist, sorry. Inside this app, the user could perhaps, you know, provide updates about how they're feeling, perhaps fill out worksheets that the therapist has sent them so that they can send all this data before the therapist session and the therapist can, you know, know exactly what to tackle and talk about during this next session rather than having to spend time getting caught up at the beginning of the session. Therefore, as a result, saving more time. So once you came up with a solution that you want to address and create and work on, then you will start thinking about, you know, your tech stack, how you want to design it, the look and feel, UI, UX, and start hacking from there. All righty, I'm going to hand, off, hand it off to Victoria now to, to talk about some more awesome stuff. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. That was an amazing um, way to start off our workshop and some valuable information learned there. Um, so for my segment of the workshop, I'll be talking about ways that you can not hack at a hackathon um, so you, that you can participate um, or partake in without ever having to write a line of code. But I do want to emphasize the value of um, starting somewhere. And I am no means trying to say that if you're a beginner, you can only do um, certain it's next to stuck to what I am um, going to propose. But um, these are merely just suggestions for you to um, make the most out of your hackathon experience. So I'll be breaking down uh, into three phases today. Um, the Phase one, which is engage, um, two, contribute, which will which will be where we'll be having our design intermission and our tour of Figma, and three, which is learn. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So one of the most valuable um, people that you can engage with at a hackathon is mentors. So you can ask them questions. Um, they don't have to be technical. They can be non-technical, such as about their career, their origin story, what drove them to um, enter the tech industry, what drove them to want to mentor at hackathons? Uh, what is their favorite part of mentoring at hackathons? Um, and of course, for those of you who are extremely interested in ideation and brainstorming, um, mentors provide a valuable source of feedback. Uh, these are individuals with um, multiple projects under their belt. They have so much experience that they are most more than willing to share with you. So. Um, please, please feel free to uh, ask them any questions that you might have. And of course, uh, technical help. So if you are a beginner to a to Python or Java or a different language, and you want um, specific help on that, many mentors have a specialized skill set, and they are well versed in the different type of resources that you can include. 
Um, so yeah, I've listed below some example questions that you can draw on if you want to uh, gain some inspiration or need some um, icebreakers for uh, engaging with mentors. So for our next um, engaging with a, a set of people at a hackathon, uh, we have sponsors. So we highly, um, that is why we highly uh, recommend that you come prepare with your resume and we actually do ask for it uh, when you sign up for command F. Um, and that is because there is no better way to hunt for jobs or internships than engaging with sponsors at a hackathon because by attending one, you are really showing them the dedication and drive and commitment that many sponsors look for when they are um, picking people to come intern or work at their companies. Uh, in addition, you get an incredible amount of exposure to different companies. Um, you get to explore a new industry, you get to find out about careers you didn't even know existed, and you get an insider scoop about the company culture and what it means to work at XYZ company or the other. So if you are ever nervous about um, engaging with sponsors, I have listed a bunch of like questions that you can ask them, such as, what drew you to the company you work at now? So you can talk about how they found their way to the current position they're at, um, a day in the life for them, and pros and cons about what it means to work at their specific field. Of course, um, being at a hackathon, we have a unique privilege this year because it's all online, it's, it's virtual. So you get to engage with hackers from all around the world, which is amazing because you get to build connections with people that you probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet otherwise. Um, so you can do this through many activities. We have our popular Among Us session. Uh, there are discussion-based activities that um, some leaders will be uh, hosting and if you really were inspired by the panel that we just uh, were at prior to this workshop uh, you can try your hand at discussing some questions about what it means to be women in STEM with your fellow hackers. Also uh, we really do want to emphasize the role of self-care at and wellness at um, or, or Command F 2021 this year. Um, also, a little bit of friendly competition never hurt anyone. So contests such as like the mascot contest where you have the opportunity to design a Command F's mascot for next year. Um, it's just a great way to get involved as well. Some example icebreakers that you can uh, engage with with other hackers. You can ask them, why did you decide to attend? You can ask them, how did they get into tech? And what are their goals for this hackathon? Which as Kevin mentioned is, is super important just for um, outlining uh, with other hackers. And of course, we really want you to engage with us, the organizers. So our amazing co-presidents will be hosting some fireside chats at Command F this year, where our just basically drop in um, Discord channels uh, which have revolve around the topic and you can ask them for advice and just discuss with them. So lots of, of lots of lots of opportunities to discuss this year. Um, and yeah, we really want to hear from you. Uh, we really want to make Command F the best experience it could be. So our socials will be linked at the end and we do want to learn if there's anything you think we can improve on or things that you really, really liked. Um, also, we have the Hacker Spotlight, which is led by our amazing engagement team. Um, so this essentially is just an interview uh, with one of uh, NW Plus's members, um, and it's just a very short interview just about who you are, and we really want to showcase your stories because you are um, the basis of our hackathons, and, and we just really want to learn more from you and learn about um, how we can better uh, highlight your stories. So yeah, some example icebreakers listed there, and an example of the Hacker Spotlight on the right. Okay, so now let's head over to the contribute phase of um, things that you can do at a hackathon. Uh, yeah, so you can partake in non-technical roles on teams if that's something that you are interested in and that's something that you feel like you want to uh, broaden your horizons on. So you could do product management, um, which is essentially UI, UX design, um, just so you are designing the uh, product and what it looks like and engaging in prototyping tools, as we can see on the bottom left. Um, or the top right. So if you have experience in Sketch, Procreate, Figma, um, and really just want to bring that to the table when you work and exercise your creativity muscle, um, please feel free to do that. So on that note, 
uh, we'll be actually heading over for a quick tour of Figma. Um, so for those of you who completed the pre-workshop uh, checklist and um, were interested in following along, it, this will be an awesome time to open up the Figma app on your devices. But um, no worries if you haven't done that either, because I will be um, just <laughs> showing you on my screen and then you can follow along and the workshop will be recorded. So you can always uh, reference that later. Um, so this is actually a great introduction to the uh, intro to prototyping workshop that we have this afternoon with UX Hub as they will be going over prototyping in Figma. So just a perfect um, segue for that. So let's let's get into it. Um, so I'm just going to open up Figma here on my laptop and I'm going to head over to the top left corner um, and the plus button where I will be clicking on to open a new file. So it might take a while to load. OK, awesome. So this is the platform that you will see um, if you just head into Figma for the first time. And I will be just going walking you through the various tools uh, that we'll be having here. And then along the way, we can play around with some of the controls and all that. So I guess the first thing we should do is probably just name our file. And I'll just name it something random like hello. Um, Okay, so yeah, this is just a curse, the cursor tool, and you can click on this little hat icon if you want to expand. Um, as you can see, if I click here, more things pop up. So that's really useful down the line. Okay, I'm actually going to click on this hashtag lookalike tool over here called frame. And if you want to do a keyboard shortcut, um, you can just click the F on your keyboard. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it brings up this window on the right side where it's essentially just a frame of dimensions, um, different pre-made dimensions of things that you could do. So for example, this would be a MacBook dimension right off the bat. Um, so let's work with this today. OK, so clicking the image brings up the uh, so several controls on the right hand side here. Um, so we have the x, y coordinates. So this is essentially just uh, where you want your image to be located on the screen. Um, so let's bring that back there. Um, and then, of course, we have the width and the height. Um, let's remember that it's 1152. Um, I wouldn't really recommend changing it because, um, as I mentioned, these come with uh, pre-made dimensions for your specific project that you're working on. So this will be essentially your view of the MacBook screen. Um, a tool that is pretty useful is the rotation tool. So if you so please to um, want to rotate your uh, frame, that would be really useful as well. And another useful tool is the corner radius, which um, is good for curving your frame. So as you can see, uh, I just curved my rectangle over there. Um, and yeah, that's what, yeah, so this is, would be like what it would be like if I put in 20 and as you can see, 200 would be much curved. So that is the rule of thumb. Awesome. OK, so now we have, um, I won't be going through all the tools you um, of Figma because there are a lot. <laughs> so the next tool that I will be going over is the fill tool, which is my personal favorite because I love experimenting with colors. Um, so yeah, my favorite color is blue. So we're going to choose that. And you can easily just make your screen whatever color you please. Um, so that's awesome. OK. So now our next tool that we are exploring today is, yeah, you can zoom in and out um, as well. So that's pretty helpful. Uh, let's, do, let's do a star. OK, so I just drag and drop it onto the screen. OK. And let's also use our fill tool for this and choose a random color. OK, awesome. Yeah, so there is the place image function as well. Um, and I will be placing an image on the screen of Ada Lovelace, who is the uh, mother of computing and the um, founding computer female computer programmer. So that's awesome. Um, and then the next tool that I'll be exploring is the pen tool. So um you can get really creative with this but i will just make a triangle <laughs> okay awesome and then when you're done you just hit this if you want to fill um you could just fill your fill your triangle um, with a color of your choice 
too red. Um, and yeah, pencil tool gives you more flexibility. So I'm disclaimer that I'm drawing on a trackpad. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we also have the text box tool. So if you drag and drop there, um, brings up the controls on the side and you can switch the fonts that you like. You can switch um, the size that you like and several other alignments as well. So let's do, oh, that is tiny. I can't see that. <laughs> um, let's do 144. Hello, OK. Awesome. And then we have our hand tool, which essentially when your programs get really big, um, this just helps you navigate well. And because Figma is an interactive um, software, there are like tools for comments that you can use. Um, so these are really helpful if you want to work with your um, teammates. So yeah, now that we're good for that, I am actually just going to bring the click on this plus sign at the very bottom. So with export, and I'm just going to, yeah, let's export hello, hello. <laughs> um, so we can just save that. So that's very, useful, or if I don't want to select anything, I can export um, my latest file. So yeah, I'm going to click on the one with everything on it and just export the file and just save it there. Awesome. OK, so that is it for our tour of Figma. And we're going to head back to um, the rest of the presentation. <laughs> OK, so other non-technical roles on Teams, or rather uh, no-code no roles on Teams that you can partake in uh, might consist of hardware or engineering, so with Arduino, um, which is a physical programmer circuit board. And um, I guess it does require a bit of software. But uh, yeah, so you can play around with that if you so like. Um, there's also the project manager uh, role. So this is the essential go-to point between designers, programmers, um, whoever else is part of the team. Uh, they'll probably be in charge of the pitch and presentation video. So um, you might need some video editing skills or just organizational skills. Um, and then there's also a demoer and researcher. So your researcher is the person that will gather the information if you are um, intending to target a specific audience with your product. Uh, that would they would probably be the one most suited to do that and gather all the background information. Um, and demoer is, is someone who would be demoing your product and testing it out for um, submitting it. OK, so we will move on to our final phase of learn. And we do really want to emphasize that um, you should really be looking to learn in all um, the different ways at a hackathon. Uh, these two other ways are just um, extra supplemental um, knowledge that I just really wanted to highlight. Uh, so some ways to learn at Command F is the keynotes. So keynotes are just a great way to get a wealth of information for free. Um, I'm not sure if all of you were at previously our keynote panel for Command F Learn, but I'm sure um, if you attended, you probably got something valuable from it. And we actually have an amazing set of panelists next week at Command F2 who um, are just very experienced in their field. So we would just highly recommend looking out for that. Um, also, workshops that uh, uh, you're here today. So you'll be um, getting an incredible day of full of the different type of workshops. But some past workshops at NW that we've hosted um, include intro to APIs, Git 100 to um, 101 to um, and just data visualization. So as you can see, these are pretty like niche topics that um, some of you might not have. Uh, if you're complete beginners, you might not have thought of um, before entering the hackathon. So this is just a great way to learn a new skill that you might not have um, thought of learning before. Um, so yeah, well, we want to dive into our next part of the presentation part um, and the first, which is the mindset check. Um, so part one, uh, we really do want to iterate reiterate that we would like for you to take care of your health as best as possible. Um, hackathons aren't about winning. They're truly just about learning. It isn't, we really want to shot, um, emphasize the value of the unfinished project. Uh, we just want to be the launch pad to your dreams. Um, so make sure to take regular breaks, um, stay hydrated, and get some sleep. Um, yeah, they are a tremendous way to learn new skills, build projects, and share um, information with others. So it's just all about connecting and networking and meeting new people. 
Um, yeah, as I mentioned before, you can attend workshops or talks, play mini games, do whatever uh, brings you the most um, joy at a hackathon and, and you find really fun. Um, yeah, we would love if you could keep uh, just an atmosphere of respect and kindness and be open to everyone's ideas. Um, and we will also just like, as before, coding isn't the only way to contribute, but if but if you um, do feel inclined to, please um, feel free to, no, no matter which skill level or ability you come from. So with that, I will hand it back over to Kevin for uh, to take us through the next part of our workshop. All righty. Thank you, Victoria, for the awesome walkthrough of Figma. So uh, as much as you can plan ahead and think exactly about what you want to do coming into this hackathon, what, whether it be you know, programming or perhaps non-programming related, like attending workshops, things like that, um, not everything will uh, go according to plan as much as you may plan ahead. So what's going to be really important is solving bugs and issues and things like that. So solving problems. Bugs and issues will arise during a hack. Knowing how to resolve them is going to be really important. We can think about at least three possible solutions you can use to resolve your issues and bugs. Break it down, ask the community, and seek mentor help. So the first one, breaking it down. So oftentimes, problems can be quite overwhelming at first. Figuring out what you're actually stuck on can be quite beneficial. So perhaps you're you know, writing some code and it's just throwing all these crazy errors. But at the end of the day, it could just be a mistake somebody calling somewhere that could just solve all those problems, right? So what could be really helpful is just you know, figuring out what the actual problem is or the root. So something I would recommend doing perhaps is grabbing an animate object, or quite often what you may see programmers do is grabbing a duck. Well, what they'll do is you know, talk about the issue, walk through a problem with the duck, and by vocalizing the issue and talking about it and slowly going through it bit by bit, you can possibly break that much bigger problem into you know, smaller, easier to solve issues one by one that you can systematically resolve and overcome this seemingly impossible to solve problem at first. Something you probably have also heard about in the past is Googling things, which is going to be a very valuable skill. Simply copy and pasting the error code that you got into Google search can perhaps take you directly to a solution, either on Stack Overflow or some other coin forum that you can use and reference for your own project. So the second one, asking the community. So there's no shame in asking questions. Everyone has to start somewhere. You have your teammates, mentors, other team members, and even organizers at your disposal. And there's going to be many avenues to go about asking these questions. You can use Discord. Perhaps reach out on Discord. You know, perhaps use a general chat and be like, "Hey, has anyone ever has this, has, has anyone ever faced this problem before? Has anyone had this issue before? Or what's what's your take on this problem?" You can set up a one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Perhaps you really like someone's implementation of a certain piece of code, or you really liked how they did this part of their project. Perhaps, perhaps you can reach out to them and set up a one-on-one -on -one and just talk about you know, how they did it and what, how they were able to achieve you know, whatever they did. You, go to, you could go to a sponsor booth. Quite often, sponsors themselves are you know, software developers of themselves and you know, have experience you know, working on projects and programming. And you can go to them for help with your project as well. The last one, seeking mentor help. So we welcome many, many industry professionals to our hackathons. Most of them have extensive knowledge of their field and perhaps have worked you know, doing what they love programming for many years now. Mentors hang out in the mentor lounge or float around. Now we don't have a physical mentor lounge for you all to visit as things are quite clearly uh, virtual, but you will find mentors online and available for you to reach out and for, for help throughout the hackathon on Discord. Do keep in mind that mentors do not code for you, but they're very happy to troubleshoot bugs and provide expert guidance. How I like to think of things is treat your mentors as the TAs that you have in your classes. You wouldn't expect to bring a problem to your, to your TA and five minutes later have a written out step-by-step -step solution to how to solve that problem. No, it's the same case with mentors, right? You could go to, your, you could go to a mentor with your problem and they give you suggestions, feedback, ideas about how you could resolve your problem. And perhaps they could talk about you know, the implications of choosing one solution over another solution, or you know, potential roadblocks may run into in the future as a result of choosing something over another, right? As I said, they're very knowledgeable and wise in what they do. So once everything's programmed, designed, and submitted, it'll be time to demo our product. So let's talk about it. So demos then and now. So demos at in-person hackathons were generally science fair expo style, dragons then on stage style, or a combination of both. Each hackathon catering to different attendees can be quite different. 
Maybe you've been to a hackathon before ran by a different organization. They may do demos very differently from how we do things here at NW+. This year, we'll be doing some differently styled demos and judging for our virtual hackathons. You'll make sure to read up on demo guidelines and ask questions early. Given the sheer amount of projects and work to coordinate judging and demos, last minute adjustments are often very hard to accommodate. Please don't wait till the last minute, submit early and make changes whenever you need to. I personally would recommend you know, starting around the half hour before um, projects are due. So you have ample time to start you know, your submission process and you start running into things like technical difficulties, maybe your Wi-Fi cutouts at an unfortunate time. You still have extra time to you know, get those problems resolved and still get your projects submitted on time. As I said, it's really hard to make exceptions for people to still submit their project after deadline as we are trying to keep it a level and even playing field for all the attendees. So video demos. So instead of in-person demos or live stream demos, this year we'll be requiring video demos at most of our hackathons, including Command F next weekend. As always, read and understand guidelines well in advance. Please keep the demo within the five minute mark as that is the limit that we are setting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, start your video edit demo editing process very early. Render versions of the video as soon as you start creating content. Ensure your video file but video files, sorry, are accepted file types and size by DevPost. Now, DevPost does accept most standard video files, so you should be good for the most part. If you have technical difficulties, as I said, please communicate to an organizer before the submission deadline. It is very hard to accommodate teams after the deadline has passed. So what is the best demo strategy for a pitch on my project? Now, how I like to think of things is imagine you're on Dragon's Den and you're looking to pitch your idea to secure funding. So what I recommend doing perhaps is, you know, perhaps today or sometime this week, is go online and watch some pitches online and learn how they do them. Perhaps watch an episode of Dragon's Den or Shrek's Tank, which is a pretty close equivalent. You know, it has been, you know, Online hackathons have been running for a while now and uh, for the past months. So you can even go online and search for those as well. See how people have been doing their demos at online hackathons and see what a winning demo may look like. And perhaps you know you could use that as a starting point for how you want to structure your own demo. So you may also want to think about you know, telling a story to your judges. Make them want to help you. Make them believe that your idea is the best idea in the room. Some questions you may want to think about and perhaps address in your demo are, what is the problem that we're directly addressing or trying to resolve with our project? How are we solving this problem through whatever we're doing? Who does this benefit? Is there perhaps a direct community that will you know, see direct um, help as a result of us completing our finished project? How do we build this? How scalable is this to a larger population? What does this product look like? So this would be where you would present your prototypes or designs. What challenges do we face? What did we learn as a result of overcoming these challenges or blockades throughout our hacking experience? What changes would we make if we had more time or in the future as we continue building on this project, if that's a plan that you have? And lastly, why do you, the judges, care about my project? Is there some societal good that you, you know, directly will help as a result of this project? Is there something you want to directly mention that will be able to benefit um, a certain group of people, as I previously mentioned? Now, these questions may, are just a few that we've brainstormed and maybe something that you want to think about. But something I recommend doing as well is perhaps to spend a few minutes or perhaps half an hour before you create a demo and brainstorm a little bit about exactly the points you want to address and talk about during your own demo. As from project to project, the exact things you want to talk about will vary. So this might be something you want to talk about and discuss with your teammates. So once everything is submitted and demoed and we're at the end of the hackathon, the prize will be given out, we'll be at the very end. So what happens next? So congratulations to our winners, but again, hackathons are not about winning. You may want to take a minute to reflect on what did you learn? What did you build and maybe share with the world? Perhaps write a little cute post on Instagram or LinkedIn and talk about this, this awesome project you made. Talk about all the blockades you overcame. Talk about the awesome people that you had the opportunity to work with. And even if you didn't win a prize at the very end, I think that's totally fine. Because at the end of the day, I think the most important part is the fact that you're leaving this hackathon at least a little bit more knowledgeable and wiser than you came in this hackathon at the very beginning. And that, I think that's the most important point to keep in mind about. You may want to continue building on a project in the future. So you have a great idea in your hands. Use it and build on it. Perhaps reconnect with the mentors, sponsors, volunteers who helped you along the way. 
Maybe you invite them to join your team after the D hackathon's over. And those teammates, they're potentially very like-minded individuals. You'll know, continue collaborating with them on, in the future, maybe not just on this project, but maybe another hackathon on a school project or a passion project. And please provide feedback, talk about your experiences, what went well, what perhaps things that you can work on and improve on in the future. Um, if something really went really badly for you, make sure to let us know, as we won't be aware of it if you don't tell us. The prizes, all right. So in terms of prizing, um, we will be moving away from the standard first place, second place, third place for Command F, as we are trying to focus more on the learning aspect of hackathons for Command F. Instead, we are transitioning to a $25 donation to charity for every team who submits a project. This project does not have to be completed. It can just be an incomplete project. You can just submit whatever you're able to complete um, throughout this hackathon, and we will be donating $25 to, your, to the charity of your choice. Our generous sponsors have also provided sponsor prizes. Um, you can check out our dev post for more details in terms of how to win those. We'll be having many activities throughout this hackathon. Uh, winners of these many activities will be receiving prizes. We'll also be seeing a return of our stamp raffle, which has been seeing continuing on from our past online hackathons. So if when you attend activities such like mini games or uh, perhaps workshops, things like that, you'll be awarded a stamp that will enter you into a raffle to win prizes. It's an overview of our schedule. So opening ceremonies will be held on Saturday at 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Sponsor briefing will be held then at 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Hacking period starts at 11 a.m. to Sunday 11 a.m. This mission deadline will be at Sunday at 11.15. And closing ceremonies will be at 3.30 on Sunday. This is just an overview of our rule book. So once again, you know, at Nubi Plus, we take honesty and integrity very seriously. Please break your down your work into your small red commits with clear commit messages. Ensure that your work is your own. Work code can only be committed by members of your own team. And that all work after the brainstorming phase can be started after the hackathon officially begins, which is 11 a.m. on Saturday. Now, one thing I want to note is for um, for more robotics builds, um, perhaps 3D printing, um, if you're doing more of an engineering project, um, 3D printing your parts is allowed before the hackathon begins. However, please do not start assembling them. Um, this is because we are aware that the fact that 3D printing cranes parts may take a really long time. We also take general contact very seriously. Always treat teammates, volunteers, mentors, organizers, and others with respect. We do not tolerate acts of harassment, trolling, deception, or abuse, and we abide by the MLH code of conduct which can be seen on the link below. We do take a lot of pride in offering safe, welcoming events for all. That brings us to the end of today's workshop. If you guys have any questions, we'll be taking them now on Discord. Please feel free to reach us anytime at NW Plus UBC on Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, and use the ha hashtag command F throughout the event if you're making any social media posts. Other than that, thank you for attending. Yeah, thanks everyone.